One of the toughest schedules in the nation, 29 and 25, but should be an NCAA tournament team based on schedule strength alone. We've got four on the docket today from Fayetteville, and away we go with strike one to the freshman, Jayla Lassiter. First pitch time, 10.02 a.m. Some softball with your scrambled eggs. So we can get all four games in today and hopefully do so under dry skies. Cross all your appendages. As Lassiter fouls Bunn out of play for strike two. Ole Miss team coached by Jamie Traxel. Paige Smith has provided a lot of power batting third and playing first base for the Rebels. Savannah Sykes, the grad transfer from Georgia, been a big part of their success as well. Ole team at a 7-9 all-time in the SEC tournament. Won the championship in 2017. Oh, not much success otherwise. Last year, a win over Georgia, a loss to Arkansas. 34th in the RPI, number five strength of schedule in the country. So they are battle-tested, and they feel like a young team is starting to get better. Angela Lasseter. A big part of this team that had high hopes coming this season, a lot of freshmen and transfers coming into their program and really high expectations. Love the way that Jayla Lassiter plays the game. Such an athlete, tons of speed, a little bit of power, plays a great center field. Lassiter loops one to left. That's Savannah Stewart, the LSU left fielder for the game's first out. Yeah, Beth Torina said about Sydney Burzon that it's like a video game. She can dial up any pitch at any speed at any spot. She has all the tools, commands movement, controls location, goes with what is working that day. When watching film, I really like her down stuff with her drop ball. That seems to be a pitch that she goes to a lot and induces a lot of ground balls. Very good down movement. Two complete games against Ole Miss this year in an LSU series win. And that bun is laid down foul by Tate Whitley. Yeah, that drop ball, to your point, Kevin, which he pitched against Ole Miss, was a pitch that she threw often against them. And looking at some stats from 6-4-3 charts, had a whiff rate on that drop ball at about 40%. So good swing and miss pitch for her earlier this season against them. Ball. That's way up and into Whitley. Sydney Brazan and Ali Kilponen, a dynamic one-two punch for LSU this year. The longtime Tiger component, the brand new Tiger, Brazan. Yes, they did. make a postseason run, they'll need both, and they think they have two legitimate number ones on a pretty deep pitching staff for Beth Tarina's group. Whitley at 323, 376 on base for Ole Miss. Little dribbler here, and Brazan will field her position cleanly. Yeah, that's that drop ball down the zone again. Got Whitley out in front of that pitch, off the end of her bat. And when you look at the heat map from Sydney Brazan for where she gets more, most of her swings and misses, it's that red area, and you can tell that's more down in the zone. That's that drop ball. She'll work her change up. So when you look at this heat map, it tells you everything you need to know as a scouting report going up against her as a hitter. She's going to be more down in the zone, as you can see with that red. Paige Smith, that's down in the zone and right at the bottom of the zone. Smith with big pop in the bat, nine home runs. Eight of them in SEC play. In fact, Paige Smith in SEC play this season had only 17 hits. Eight of the 17 were homers. Fourth in Ole Miss history with her 31 home runs. Eyes locked in on the field. You can give me that. I'm not even going to look at it. <laughs> Smith down looking. The movement, the command, sharp for Sydney Burzon in her first SEC tournament inning. Danica Coffey will lead off for LSU. 
could get up. And Coffee takes one a little bit low, according to the plate umpire Brian Crochet. Cameron Ellison at first, James Colsey at third, our umpire and crew for game one. Oh, oh down. Danica Coffey, a very confident pitch taker. 490 on base percentage to lead LSU. 32 walks, second most on the team. The junior who has become a mainstay at the top of LSU's lineup. Oh. Beth Tarina has circled those one and two spots. Said about 100 games in a row now. She's written in Danica Coffey and Ciara Briggs. Major consistency. Two players that get on base a lot, that are base stealing threats when they get there. And will work long at bats and wear down pitchers. Oh. And Coffey takes four balls. So Caitlin Riley trying to get the bottom of the zone and couldn't get it. And it's a four pitch walk to start as we look at the LSU lineup. And you see Allie Newland, the SEC player of the week, batting fifth. And you also see the letter L quite a bit in there. Eight of nine lefties. Only Georgia Clark, the starting designated player and cleanup hitter, is a right handed batter. And almost going to make a visit immediately. Pitching coach Riker Chasen, after a four pitch walk, is out to talk to Caitlin Riley. You could see how patient the Danica Coffee was with the strike zone and, and her at bat taking some close pitches and Caitlin Riley not getting the call right at the knees, maybe a little bit off, but the umpire Brian Crochet was saying it was a little bit down. Looked like a good height to me and Riker Chasen right now talking to the home plate. Umpire probably asking about the strike zone and where those pitches were, but you know something's up when we're just one batter in and there's already a timeout on the field. <laughs> if you're a drop ball pitcher, and you're not getting that in the first at bat of the game. What's in your head? It, it makes it tough. It already puts more pressure on Caitlin Riley to bring that pitch more up in the zone and against an experienced, powerful LSU lineup that's not going to be easy. And almost may not have a long leash here. Ainsley Furbush, Landon Bruce in the bullpen. Here's a butt laid down by Briggs. Sacrifice butt will advance Coffee to second. After a four pitch walk, Sierra Briggs lays down a button. It's a good play by Savannah Sykes. She knew she had to be quick because you have speed at first base with coffee and speed at the plate with Briggs. Didn't look to me like she had a good grip, uh, but maybe it was just what I saw off. It just didn't seem like a sharp throw, like she didn't have a good grip on that ball, but getting the out regardless and a sacrifice bunt for Briggs. So Coffee's at second, and here is Taylor Pleasance. Now fully recovered from that core issue. She called it an oblique injury recently, Taylor Pleasance. Started to pick up a little bit more power. Three doubles since returning, 11 for 31. After that stretch where she basically played as a glorified slapper. And was in there so LSU could have her defense. She's such a presence in the field. Now she's a presence at the plate again. And Pleasant sends a sky high fly into center. Jayla Lassiter has the second out. Coffee will hold at second base. Well, Keelan Riley has done a good job of finding the strike zone against Briggs and Pleasant after that. Visit with Jamie Traxel and her pitching coach Riker Chasen. It's a huge out. She got ahead of Taylor Pleasant so and two and got her to pop out. Big quick out for Riley. And now the only right hander in LSU's lineup, Georgia Clark. And Clark in the left center field. That's fading quickly for a base hit. Coffee waved around third, and she will beat the throw from Lassiter to make it one nothing LSU. Georgia Clark with an RBI on the first pitch she sees 
in this year's SEC tournament. Yeah, she is an RBI producer in the middle of the order for LSU, and she is aggressive early in the count. This is a bit of an off-speed pitch on the outside corner, but it's more up in the zone, and she's out in front of this pitch. Doesn't get all of it, but she gets enough of it. She's such a powerful hitter, able to lift that pitch to the outfield. A strong throw by Lasseter out in center field to make that even close and a second thought at home, but an RBI gets him on the board first. What do you like about that swing from Georgia Clark? Stayed on plane for a long time. Able to get that a little bit out in front of that pitch, but still able to get enough of it. LSU, as you can see, superb when scoring first this year, 31 and four. Mark ups what was a 427 average with runners in scoring position before that hit. Well, here's the reigning player of the week in the conference, Allie Newland. And Newland hits a ground ball off the glove of the shortstop, Allie. Michaela Allie, who started every game at short this year, went into the hole it scored a base hit off the glove of alley and the tigers have two on yeah but i think she would tell you that this is a play that she needs to make and she's fully capable of making this play it's up the middle and it's pretty rangy towards the middle of the field but alley being a veteran shortstop with a lot of experience should make that play that actually will go down as an error yeah, as it should been changed quickly and that is the right call based on what we see there so Allie with her 10th error of the season for an almost team that is usually pretty strong in the field. We saw some two out errors bird Mississippi State in our opening game last night. LSU will try to take advantage of a two out error here. Mackenzie Rudity slashes one back to the screen. Rudy, the sophomore, quietly having a good power season for LSU. 17 extra base hits lead the Tigers. One ahead of Pleasance and Clark. Oh. Saw a shot of Riker Chasen, who's the pitching coach at Ole Miss, spent some time at LSU and worked under Beth Torina, so got a chance to learn a lot from her and sure learned a lot about pitch calling and pitching in general. Oh. Not many better to learn from than Beth Torino. Riker Chasen, your three under Jamie Traxel. Oh. Of course, it's not fun when you have to pitch call against Beth Torina's lineup, especially with lefties who do hit Caitlin Riley much better than righties. Yeah, lefties hitting over about 60 points higher than right-handed hitters, and she's going to face so many of them today in this lineup. On a 3-1, Rudy takes a tight strike two. So here's the lefty-righty. Splits against Caitlin Riley. Although more strikeouts against lefties. And a strikeout against a lefty here. So Ole Miss works around the two out error, but LSU gets the first. Attitude and her fight against cancer. And she told me, I had to remind myself, even if I'm not 100%, I'm still going to enjoy what I can do out on the field for my team because of Aubrian. She's an amazing young woman, Courtney. It's a great story. And for Taylor, there are not a lot of players that would have the fight, that would find the determination to come back as quickly as she did. Well, we said it off the top, Amanda. But she could barely swing, and she still was in the starting lineup outside of just four games just to be a presence in the box and to be a presence in the field fighting through that core injury for LSU. Yeah, LSU lost three of the four games that she was completely out, and Taylor Pleasance went to Beth Torina after that fourth game and said, look, I, I can't hit, but I can do what I can do, and I want to be out there for the team. And Beth Torina said her defense just wasn't the same without her, so wanted her at that shortstop position. And the swing is down. 
Kayla Komoku strikes out the throw completed by Newland and Sydney Burzon's retired the first four. Guys, too, Beth Torina told us when Taylor Pleasant started full swinging for the first time in the cages, the team was cheering so loudly. I mean, she means so much to this program. They were so excited when she was healthy and able to come back. I said they were literally jumping for joy in the batting cage just to see Taylor swing. And Taylor, on her first swing back, hit a double because, of course, she did. She's Taylor Pleasant's. Well, she was SEC Player of the Week <laughs> her first week back at full strength. As she could swing away. So one out, Savannah Sykes is the batter. And Sykes slaps a ground ball wide of her head coach. Longtime Georgia Bulldog, Savannah Sykes. She's injected a real winning mentality into this program, fifth year senior. It's three for three with a home run on Sunday. Oh. And the Ole Miss comeback win over Alabama. Two hundred and fifty fourth game for Savannah Sykes. Two hundred and forty seventh start of her career between Georgia and Ole Miss. That's a swing at the plate as called by Brian Crochet two and two. Ah, there's one of the light brights that were being handed out into the stadium. There's some dugout art, the SIP. There's some quick work on the light bright. Oh. Yesterday we had a Rubik's Cube in the Mississippi State dugout. Today we have a light bright in the Ole Miss dugout. And goodness knows what's to come the next three games. <laughs> That's a ground ball. It sneaks under the glove of Pleasance. And Savannah Sykes is the first base runner for Ole Miss. Yeah, Savannah Sykes is just an experienced veteran player within the SEC. A lot of games wearing a different uniform, but a lot of games facing SEC pitching and able to sneak this past. A really tall, long Taylor Pleasants who can cover a lot of ground, but likely even if Taylor would have gotten that, would have been safe anyway. We don't often say snuck past Taylor Pleasant, no. six foot shortstop. <laughs> one on, one out for Michaela Alley. Alley squares to bunt. Sykes broke from first, but returned to the back. The all-time leader in games started at Ole Miss, her 251st career start for the Ole Miss Rebels. Fifth-year senior from Corona, California. Alley will take a strike here. Ask Jamie Traxel about Michaela Alley and what she'll remember. She said, I'm going to remember that I never took for granted writing her name in the lineup. Such an incredible softball IQ, a different type of confidence, and it's definitely become more of a two-way player this year with their offensive production. <laughs> Almost team eighth in the SEC in scoring and conference games. When 8 and 16 in league play. Alley chases strike three. Newland's throw is late. Sydney Brazan's last three outs recorded on strikeouts. Yeah, and it was the pitch before the strikeout pitch. This drop ball that is a little bit more up in the zone, a little bit off speed pitch, too, that set up this drop ball out of the zone. Sydney Brazan just changing speeds well and tunneling her down movement very well, getting Alley to chase. And now Ainsley Furbush is off balance at that hard drop ball. Designated player at a home run on Sunday in her only game of the Alabama series. Oh. How advanced is Sydney Brazan's pitching style for a freshman? Very advanced. 
I mean, the way that she mixes speeds, the way that she commands every pitch that she throws. It's an off-speed pitch there, a changeup. That changeup and drop ball worked very well as a reminder against Ole Miss when she faced them early in the season. But just a true pitcher, not a thrower. I don't think she ever has been a thrower. She knows exactly what she's doing. She sure did in that inning with three swinging strikeouts. And Brazan on cruise control early in her network. South Carolina swept a three-game series at home in the regular season. The Aggies have been on what they've been calling the payback tour ever since. We'll see if they can get a little bit of revenge and advance to the quarterfinals. First first round game here, LSU and Ole Miss, the 6 and the 11. As Carly Petty takes one a little bit up from Caitlin Riley, 1 and 1. We're used to seeing Carly Petty in the postseason. Oklahoma State, three-year starter, 133 games with the Cowgirls, 365 on base, good power hitter. A pop-up from Petty into right. Who's going to get it? It will be Brooke Bernard making just her third start of the year in right field. Kamoku went out, Bernard came in and ultimately made the play. Now here's Reeling Gutierrez. What a great series against Ole Miss. LSU awfully aggressive today, swinging at the first pitch. Yeah, in the first inning, five of the six swung at the first pitch. And just on the season as a team, they only swung at about 24% of the first pitches in their ABs. Amanda, we've talked about this lefty lineup for LSU, one right-handed hitter in the lineup for the Tigers. I'm wondering, as a pitcher facing that, does it get you in a rhythm, just going lefty after lefty, or what is what are the challenges there? Yeah, I always liked it when a hitter was hitting from the same side versus oftentimes you'll see a coach try to stagger their lineup, righty-lefty, righty-lefty, if they have that option. LSU clearly leans more on their lefties, but... You, just, you do start to get in more of a rhythm because you're facing the same side of the plate. And we asked Beth Torina, like, hey, do you, you know, just want to recruit left-handed hitters only? And she's like, no, let everybody know. We'll take some righties out there, too. But just something that happened, it wasn't intentional. There aren't a ton of lefty pitchers in the SEC. It's not like LSU, if it makes a run to the tournament, has a whole bunch of southpaws in its path. Yeah, that's true. And I thought it was interesting to hear her talk about, too, that how they see it, their opponents make decisions against us because of the left-handed hitters, including different def defensive sets because of their speed and slappers. Oh. And their, their pitching changes, their decisions, who they're going to start. I mean, there's so much information that all these teams have on their pitchers now and on their opponent to know who can give them the best matchup that day against the lineup that they're facing. Gutierrez, short left field, and another routine fly. This is Tate Whitley for the second out. There are the Aggies waiting for game two. Saw Texas A&M and South Carolina both at the game last night. Full day of softball, Alabama, Missouri after that, and then Florida, Kentucky. Really strange to see Florida in the 8-9 game, preseason number one. And Florida and Kentucky just played each other, so they'll get to play each other four times in a row. Come all the way to Fayetteville to play the same team that you played just a few days ago. Makes the scouting report a little easier, I guess. <laughs> yeah, less prep. Number nine hitter Savannah Stewart, first batter since the leadoff hitter Coffee, not to swing at the first pitch. Graduate student Stewart trying to snap an 0 for 13 today. 
<laughs> and you just, you just saw right there on that 2-0 count that Caitlin Riley went ahead and called the pitch on her own. So sometimes Riker Chasen will go ahead and say, hey, you go ahead and, and call this batter. Or maybe she'll shake off a pitch that he calls, and then she'll call the pitch on her own to her catcher. She'll signal in just like that. Worked on that in the fall. Jamie Traxel told me earlier this year that Riker Chasen went to Jamie Traxel in the fall and it was something that he brought to her about potentially having the pitchers call their own pitches and bringing ownership to it and Brooke Vestal does it as well. They do a ton of scout and communicate with their pitchers and everybody has notes, talks to them in between innings. That slapped into short center field and falls in front of Lassiter. And Savannah Stewart does snap that 0 for 13. Her first hit in a couple of weeks is a two out single. Gets this pitch on the outside corner, just a little bit off speed. And so she hits it off the end of her bat, bloops it into center field. Now Danica Coffey for a second time. But Coffey it, finally swings. In a day and age, Kevin, where you just don't, you hardly see a catcher call the game, nevertheless, a pitcher call the game like that from the circle. So it's so unique to me, and notice it right away whenever you watch Ole Miss play, that that's something that Caitlin Riley likes to do, is just take ownership of her pitch calling. Not for every batter, just occasionally. Oh. Knowing what she wants to throw. There's a warning in the Ole Miss dugout now. I think Riker Chasen has been warned. Did not like the ball call there on that low pitch. Now a high strike. Tigers took two of three in Oxford. March 24th through the 26th. Ole Miss won the opener 5-1. LSU 2-0 and 3-1 in the next two. Seventy second meeting all time between these teams a matchup dominated by LSU historically. Fifty seven fourteen the all time series. Meeting for the third time in the SEC tournament. Last was in 2018. LSU won first game 4 1. And in 2017, Ole Miss beat LSU in the title game. So the Rebs only SEC tournament championship. Coffee in the left field, sinking into the glove of Whitley. And three air outs for Riley in the second. After three strikeouts for Sidney Burzon in the second. We'll see her. Last four outs come via the strikeout as she misses this one low to the number eight hitter, Lexi Brady. Yeah, Beth Trina told us, you know, it took me a little bit to figure out how to call pitches for her. She's just so different. Love the way that she can vary her speeds of that same pitch, throw it anywhere up to 70. A harder pitch like that, 65, or bring it down to 57, 58 miles an hour. But that down pitch, when you watch film against her, is really her best pitch, that drop ball. She can throw 70, but Beth said she, she really could beat you throwing 58. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And the ceiling for Sidney Brazan is pretty frightening if you're an LSU opponent. One and two on Brady. Out of the noted pitching hotbed of Buffalo, New York. <laughs> where it's 365 days of absolutely glorious softball weather. <laughs> That's to third base kicks off of coffee and Pleasant's throw will be late. So Lexi Brady is aboard to lead off the third. School. That ball snuck away, and here goes Brady all the way to third, and the ball is not caught there. 
So Bernard squared to bunt. The ball got away from Newland and Lexi Brady never stopped. She makes a mad dash from first to third. Oh, a quick grab of momentum here for Ole Miss because Lexi Brady gets on with a single and then Newland gets caught up here and Lexi Brady, the catcher, trying to take an extra 60 feet. They would have had her if Danica Coffey would have been able to hold on to the ball, but she drops it and Lexi Brady, Brady gets herself to third base with the wheels. And as Brooke Bernard making her fourth start of the season. Hey. What a time for it. She's six for 18 with two walks, so she's delivered when her number's been called. But it has been called rather infrequently in a moment like this. She'll show bunt, pull back, and take ball one. Bernard chases strike three. Fifth strikeout. One time through the order for Brazan. And all of them have been on this drop ball. Look at the over the top rotation that creates that down movement. She gets a sophomore to chase out of the zone. A big strikeout for the freshman. So runner at third and one out now. And the LSU infield will pinch in even tighter for Jayla Lassiter. Lassiter smokes it foul. Lassiter had some good swings off of Burzon in her first at bat, too. It was four for ten with a couple of RBIs, a double and a triple against LSU in the series earlier this season. And if Atmore, Alabama, the second game in a row in the leadoff spot after Tate Whitley had hit leadoff 38 consecutive games. Lassiter tries to lay down a squeeze, and that is foul. Even when trying to lay down a bunt on that drop ball, it's difficult to see down. So that drop ball not only playing a part in this game when hitters are choosing to swing at it, but trying to go to the short game, and still because of its movement, difficult to put the barrel on it and put in fair play. So five strikeouts all on the drop ball from Sidney Brazan. She'll throw another, and Newland makes a nice play here. Great play. Runner at third base. That ball is thrown in the dirt, and as a drop ball pitcher and an 0-2 count, Brazan has to feel comfortable to put that pitch there, especially against a hitter like Jayla Lassiter, who has power. That slowly hit to short. Pleasant's going to go to the plate. She throws it away. Lassiter on her way to second, and Ole Miss has tied it. It looked like Pleasance had a shot, but the throw was a little offline to Newland. If she had a shot because Lexi Brady hesitated, so she got a jump, and then right here she's like, oh, I don't know if I want to go, and it gave Taylor Pleasance a chance to get her out. That throw was a little bit up the line, and I'm sure Allie Newland, the catcher, was just worried about obstruction, so wanted to stay away from the plate and out of the obstruction side of the base. And Lexi Brady, again, using her wheels, to generate a run. That's a fielder's choice, E6. And ball one to Tate Whitley. You think about the Ole Miss win over LSU this season in game one. LSU committed three errors in that game, the only win for Ole Miss in a series. Two errors end a pass ball in this inning. And this is a very improved defense for LSU, too, especially on the left side. Taylor Pleasance and Danica Coffey have both cleaned up their defensive skills this season and been very strong on the left side of the infield. Another bunt drop down. They'll test him again, and Burzon has no play. Nobody's covered second. 
And then Brazan just stopped paying attention. Now, Lasseter's going to score. Oh, my goodness, it's going to be a play at third. And Whitley will be out there. But Ole Miss is running wild on LSU, which is sleepwalking through the inning defensively. And it is 2-1. First off, just a beautiful bunt by Tate Whitley. Jamie Traxel, I think, is asking about the play at third here, but we'll take a replay first before we clean that up. And just deadens that ball out in front of home plate. No play. And the Tate Whitley, who's an experienced player, puts pressure on the defense. The freshman, Burzon, just makes a late decision to throw it to second base. And then by that time, the backside runner is scoring. Tate Whitley going to be called out at third base. Looks like we might have a review. What a staggeringly unusual sequence that was. And Jamie Traxel is challenging the play at third to see if the tag was maybe late on Whitley. Boy, it, it looked like Burzon just, just stopped paying attention to the play. LSU was shouting for somebody to cover second. Somebody goes to cover second. Burzon just stopped looking. Here's the play at third on Whitley. Did the tag get down on the right hand is the question. That could potentially be asking about obstruction too. Anytime there's a play at the base and a tag play, you know that that's in the back of the coach's mind. With the knee right there, maybe blocking the base. Looks to me though that she had the ball and then went down. That's the important yeah. part of that. She has possession of the ball. Thought that Taylor Pleasance put herself in a good position too to receive that ball to avoid obstruction. This is the SEC Video Center in Birmingham, the centralized location. This is by far the longest review we've seen in our two games of the tournament, and understandably so. It's a very tight play. There was no obstruction at third base. The runner is out. So no obstruction. Whitley is out. And our official score is going to have a heck of a time trying to sort that mess out. <laughs> but Ole Miss has taken the lead. I thought Taylor Pleasance put herself in a very good position over at third base to avoid obstruction and then go down with that tag. 2-5 on the out at third. It'll be a bunt single for Whitley. And again, Burzon just held the ball, didn't pay attention to Whitley running to second. And by the time she threw, Lassiter was ready to pounce and score from third. Lasseter, so much speed, so important to have an awareness of who's on base, where they're at, the situation, and be communicating on defense. That's a fair ball to third coffee. And this nightmare defensive inning for LSU is over. Two errors of oh. <laughs> Inspired by the Kentucky Derby. Not by much, just a touch. Uh, just a I'm inspired by Courtney is what I am. You might have a future calling races like that. You think so? Yeah. Larry Colmas hangs it up. Slap to third. Sykes is right there to get Briggs. Well, Kaylin Riley pitching with a lead for the first time after that. Two run mess of a top of the third. She'll face Taylor Pleasance. The all SEC shortstop. Oh. Yeah, tough left side of the infield. Couple of errors made by LSU in that last inning, including one by Taylor Pleasance.
That's popped up. And that's the shortstop alley, and Pleasance is 0 for 2. LSU had not committed an error in its last 35 innings. Before that third inning, they had not had a game with two errors since March, March 30th to be exact. 20 games since their last multi-error game. They had two errors in the span of three batters. Wow. Postseason play. It's wild out here. Only five pitches in the inning for Caitlin Riley looking for a quick one against two, three, and four. And she is going to get it. Three two pitch outs for different schools. A ground ball back to Berzan and LSU a little bit better to start this inning defensively after the two error and one pass ball third. Coming up next here on SEC Network, South Carolina. One of the surprise teams in the SEC this season. They're going to go back to the NCAA tournament. They were the 13 seed the last couple of years. They're the 10 this year. They swept Texas A&M in their regular season series. 10 versus 7. First pitch schedule for one local to Easter. Give me one quick thing you're looking for, South Carolina A&M. Mm, to see when and if South Carolina throws Donnie Goborn, mm. their transfer pitcher who's taken the SEC by storm that ended up bouncing off of Michaela Alley there. So it's going to be dead ball. When you face a drop ball pitcher, you'll see quite a few foul balls that are hit right into a hitter's foot or shin or ankle right at the top of her foot. Got one ball, one. She'll be feeling that tomorrow. Maybe later today. That's to third and coffee. Two quick outs for Sydney Brazan on just four pitches. Yeah, that inning, I mean, you talked about it before, but just such an uncharacteristic defensive inning for LSU based off of not years past, but based off of this year and the way that LSU's defense has improved, specifically on the left side. Coffee and Pleasance have started every game there, save for the four where Pleasance was injured. And they each committed an error in that third inning. Oh. So ground outs for Kamoku and Sykes. Now ball one to Michaela Alley. At a six pitch inning for Riley in the third. This will be the sixth pitch of the fourth. And it's not going to end it, it doesn't look like, as Alley smashes one off the wall, and Michaela Alley will take second. A senior alley, a much bigger offensive threat this season with her eighth double. And they'll light her up in the Ole Miss dugout. And Michaela Alley sees this drop ball left hanging. Look at the location of this pitch. She sees that this is a mistake. Usually, Brazan's drop ball has been moving down below the knees, but that pitch was just above the knees, almost about belt high. It just stayed flat. Michaela Alley, a veteran hitter, notices that mistake, attacks it. She's on time. For a double. You know what they call left center field here at Bogle Park? Hog Heaven? They call it Michaela Alley. Oh, Michaela Alley. Okay, okay. It's just been renamed. <laughs> just got an alert on my Slack channel. <laughs> First extra base hit either team. Furbus. Strike one. One ball, one strike, one and one. Ainsley Ferber struck out on a drop ball down and out her first time. Last six hitters have put it in play against Burzon after she had struck out 
five of the first nine. For Bush, a tough SEC season. Nine for 54, one walk, 18 strikeouts, so 193 on base. And she'll chase this one, and Newland applies a tag. Six strikeout for Burzon in the RPI. Top eight seeds can be super regional hosts. Doesn't mean you will be, but the top eight teams, if you win your regional, guaranteed to host a super. This is what you think is the bubble right now, these teams in the RPI 6 through 11, Amanda? Yeah, they'll definitely be in the mix. I'm sure on Sunday they'll be at the edge of their seats, seeing if they grab one of those top eight seeds. So important, and it's really what you work for whenever you have a, a tough strength of schedule and want to win some of those games. It's one thing to have a really good strength of schedule, but it's another thing to put wins behind that strength of schedule and have an RPI like LSU has. Those two wins against Georgia last weekend were significant. Allie Newland drops it in the left field, leadoff base hit. And for the first time since the first inning, LSU has the leadoff runner on. Kaitlin Riley had retired eight of the last nine that she had faced before Newland with that leadoff single. Second time in this game that LSU's gotten their leadoff hitter on. And she's aboard for Mackenzie Rudity. Who struck out swinging, the only LSU player to strike out today. So it's an unusual profile for LSU because they're number six in the RPI, but the number you see next to their name on the score bug is not the RPI. That's their seed in SEC play. They're the sixth seed in the conference, yet they have the top RPI because their strength of schedule is so good. Non-conference play, played Oklahoma, Louisiana, split with Louisiana, beat Utah twice, Central Arkansas twice, Michigan, Minnesota. Does this strike you as a team that should host a Super Regional given everything you've seen and given how unusual it is to be six in the RPI but only be sixth in your conference as Rudity flies out? Yeah, where they finish in conference doesn't play a huge part, not one of the criteria that the selection committee looks at. It's the wins, the number of top 25 wins that they have, the strength of schedule at four. Those are the numbers that they'll be grinding through as well as their top 50 wins and any bad losses that might be on their resume. So there's going to be, so, it's so hard to pick this year for the top eight seeds right around the bubble area and the top 16 seeds. I think, though, the two wins against Georgia at home were huge on Sunday. Ended up playing a doubleheader and beating them twice. And then if they could win this game, another game tomorrow here in the tournament, big dad of their resume. You know, Beth Tarina, too, she talked to us about expectations, and she said if you don't get what you want, hope, or pray for, you get what you expect. So she tries to keep those expectations high, and guys, she's really proud of what this... Watching those two games. That ball's drilled by Petty, right center field. It's going to hang up there for Lassiter, and Carly Petty is 0 for 2. You know, Jamie Traxel and Riker Chasen call a lot of timeouts, defensive timeouts, but it seems like they go out and then they get outs after they go out and talk to their pitcher and their defense. Seems like they know the exact time and where to work that to go out and speak to their defense and find a way to get quick outs after it. Two down for Gutierrez. As long as you can call him within the framework of the game, it may slow the game down. It may not always be a work of art, but it is effective. And more often than not, they win. Oh. Jamie Traxel's teams dating back to North Dakota State, known as very fundamentally solid teams, good defensive teams. Made the NCAA tournament five times at NDSU. Made the World Series at Minnesota in 2019. 
Yeah, early on, their story was just so many close losses. A lot of games that were decided by three runs or less. And they had quite a few injuries, including Caitlin Riley be being out at the beginning of the season. Gutierrez to first. That ball stays fair. She's retired by Smith, and Caitlin Riley is held. Lady Vols, regular season champions, first time since 2007. Trying to pull the double, which Arkansas did a year ago. Razorbacks won the regular season title, then won the tournament in Gainesville. Alabama won it at home in 2021. Arkansas trying to go back to back and become the second home team to win it in three years. They'll start their title defense tomorrow. Lexi Brady out to center field and Briggs puts her away. Another quick out for Sydney Burzon, who has allowed three hits. Struck out six, walked none, giving up a couple of unearned runs through four and a third. Yeah, you just go back to that third inning when Lexi Brady was a spark for this team. Getting on with an error and then advancing 60 feet. She's running bases like crazy. She was a spark though, Kevin. That's you go back to this game and it was that third inning and her even though she got out there, but Last time she let off, she came around a score run. It was an error pass ball, error combination to bring her in. Bernard loops one. That's a fair ball. Hooking right inside the line. And Brooke Bernard making her fourth start of the season. Just plops in a one-out hit. It's all about these little adjustments. This is the same pitch that Bernard struck out on in her first at bat, an off-speed pitch, low and away. It's a drop ball that she struck out on her first at bat, and that ball just barely stays fair, catching the line. Umpire down the line was right there on the call, knew right away that that had shock. Little well, paint job. And Bernard, who can run pretty well as at first. Oh. And now we'll see if Ole Miss gets back into that small uh, ball game, which was brutally effective in the third. Lasseter reached on a fielder's choice. E6 put her to second. Scored on the bunt single and the hold of the ball by Berzon. Down and in for ball two. It's a good take by Lasseter. Not getting both pitchers not really getting the bottom of the zone in this game. Hey. Mentioned it before, but Jamie Traxel told us about Ole Miss. You know, the season hasn't gone how we expected, but They've been battle tested with their tough strength of schedule. And she told us, you know, we haven't lost a lot of confidence, even though we've been frustrated at times. You can tell that this is a team that might start feeling like this is almost a new season in the postseason with this first game. Well, guys, I think that confidence, too, for Ole Miss was built in the fall. Jamie Traxel told us the best part of adding 10 players to this roster was their competition. They had a fantastic fall. It was super fun to come to practice every day because all these players were pushing, pushing each other. So built up that confidence. He said every player, every coach, every staff member had a big fall. And they just never got into a consistent rhythm early. His last hitter grounds into a 6-4 fielder's choice. But Caitlin Riley was out for a month. Tate Whitley broke her nose early and missed a little bit of time. And they think they're a little more whole now. They think they're about as fresh as can be. And you know, like we talked about with Missouri yesterday, which beat Mississippi State, Ole Miss feels like it's their time to crash the party and their time to peak late in the season. Oh, there goes Lasseter on a delayed steal, and she is safe. Jayla Lasseter with her team high 17th stolen base. So we're going to be talking about Jayla Lasseter for years to come. Has some speed, goes in hard to second base, had a good jump to be able to move herself into scoring position. Some folks thought Lasseter was a top 20 recruit nationally out of high school. 
Love her speed, love her power, and just watching her play, there is a real fluidity. There's a real confidence for a freshman. It's one of those players. I've seen Jayla Lassiter on video before. It's my first time watching her live, and she stands out as somebody who just has the tools and has kind of a, a confident ease about her, if that makes sense. Easy confidence, maybe. A ground ball off the glove of Burzon here. Lassiter's going to try to score again. She does. It's thrown away by Petty. Lassiter just never stopped. Once again, LSU didn't realize it. And another defensive meltdown brings in a third Ole Miss run. Yeah, this should have been out number three. Hits off of Brazon's glove. Would have been an out for Carly Petty, but Tate Whitley is a slapper, puts the ball on the ground, makes things happen with her speed. And Jayla Lassiter is super aggressive, understanding that LSU is just not playing good defense in this game. Four errors on the game for LSU. Two errors on that play. E1 on Burzon, E4 on Petty. That's four different infielders, if you include the pitcher as an infielder, that have committed an error in the game for LSU. And here's Paige Smith. Smith into right field. That ball is going to be caught by Rudity. Saved a run after Ole Miss stole a run. 3-4 29 out of 30. Softball players don't try to score. That's the confidence, that's the swagger, that's the speed from their freshman center fielder. All three runs unearned. LSU's first four error game since April 3rd, 2022 against Kentucky. And the Tigers are nine outs away from another one and done at the SEC tournament. Long way to go, though, with a good offense. It's 9-1-2 and two here. Savannah Stewart and Danica Coffey and Sierra Briggs. You know, and it goes back to me to Lexi Brady, an unsuspecting character at the bottom of the order, the catcher being aggressive on the base pass, and then it's like her teammates saw her do that, and then they've just continued to do that and make LSU make plays or lack thereof. Long walk out of the box for Stewart after that strike call went the way of Riley. And Caitlin Riley, after a rocky start, walked the leadoff hitter, gave up a first inning run on a Georgia Clark hit. Has smoothly navigated the lineup from there on out. A little ground ball here, Riley. And safe to call it first. Stewart stuck in there, and she is two for two in the nine hole. Be interested to see if there's going to be a review. Close play at first base. This is the area of the lineup where LSU has a bunch of speed with Stewart, Coffey, and Briggs. And watch Caitlin Riley field this ball. It, it's not the fielding, it's how she comes up to make the throw. She gets tall, comes up. The only way that you're to make that out at first base is if you stay down and sidearm it to first base, get rid of the ball as quickly as you can. No challenge, leadoff batter's on. And here's Coffey for the third time. So third time through for LSU, how would you expect them to adjust to Caitlin Riley? I expect them just to continue to put the ball on play with their speed hitters at, at bat. Coffey puts it in the air to left. That's a fair ball reeled in by Whitley, and Stewart retreats. It's a big out and a quick out, considering the way that Coffey has been seeing the ball off of her and taking some close pitches.
One on, one out. 3-1 Ole Miss lead. Sierra Briggs takes ball one. I like the way that Jamie Traxel told Courtney in her mid-inning interview that Caitlin Riley has had really good mission-focused responses. And you've seen her, I've never heard a coach say those three words together. But it's that mentality of just all business, being able to breathe. She's so competitive in the circle. Jamie Traxel told us that Caitlin Riley is like that. They call her the bull. But being able to focus your responses and your remote and your responses and reactions at the mission at hand. Jamie told us uh, she's looking for one deep breath with Caitlin Riley, who, as she said, can get into blackout mode because she is so aggressive on the mound. But again, we've said this with a couple of young pitchers already in the first two games. She looks very poised here in the SEC tournament. Oh. Two strike pitches low to Briggs. Well, guys, Caitlin Riley comes from an athletic family. Her dad, Spencer, was the center on Tennessee's 1998 National Championship team, and he played that game hurt. He's passed along that prove-it mentality to Caitlin. So every time she steps out there, no matter the situation, she's tough. It's a ground ball here softly. Hit no play on Briggs. Sykes through behind at second. Stewart standing there. And Sierra Briggs starts the sprinkler on an infield single, and LSU has two on. This is why, to me, it was so important that Danica Coffey, the leadoff hitter who flied out to left field, try to put the ball on the ground. You saw Savannah Stewart do it and leg out an infield single, and Sierra Briggs putting the ball on the ground. When the speed of Stewart, Coffey, and Briggs is so tough on a defense, that fly out for Coffey, though, when she did not put the ball on the ground, an unproductive out right here in the speed part of the order for LSU. And now, LSU brings up a hitter that you may not want to put the ball on the ground if you're Beth Torino. Taylor Pleasance representing the go-ahead run, a 415 hitter with runners in scoring position this season. This feels like a moment. Oh. Taylor Pleasance has started to hit for doubles power again since returning from that core injury. She hasn't homered since March the 3rd, though. And Pleasance drills one into center field. Lasseter didn't come close and start the merry-go-round. Stewart is home. Briggs will score. LSU has tied it. The moment never too big for Taylor Pleasance. Taylor Pleasance had popped up in her first two at bats, and she gets more on plane, more of a smooth level swing with this one for a line drive to find that gap past a fast Jayla Lassiter, who was shaded more toward the right side of the field playing Taylor Pleasance as a pull hitter because she is a pull hitter, but she beats this shift, hits it all the way to the wall, and the speed of LSU scores to tie up this game. Oh. The ninth double of the season for Pleasance, who has knocked in 48 in 51 games, even though there was a stretch of 32 at bats where she was basically just a slapper. why it's so important to have her healthy. LSU just plays with more confidence with her not only in the defensive lineup holding down the shortstop position, but having her 100% healthy swing away bat in the lineup. Bring it on out of Georgia Clark. It's going to be open all night long. <laughs> so that one, not close. That was about as intentional as an unintentional walk can be. Georgia Clark, the second walk for LSU of the game as we go back to Taylor Pleasance. Just 
a line drive swing. You can hear it off the bat that she got all of that. And she brings the spark, the emotion to this LSU team. It's a way to battle back and answer back. That is a stat that they like to track, is how many times they answer back in a game. And Allie Newland, the reigning SEC Player of the Week, will try to give LSU the lead. Seven for ten in a series against Georgia. Oh, by the way, drove in three in that set. Yeah, getting the leadoff on in this game has been so important for both teams. Every time that the leadoff hitter has reached in this game for LSU, which is two times they've been able to score. The same thing for Ole Miss when Lexi Brady let off an air reach, she scored. It's up high to Newland. Towns in the pinch runner at second for Pleasance. Emily Casanova has come in to run for Georgia Clark at first. Pitcher slash pinch runner, Casanova. Newland chases a high one for strike two. Yeah, Furbish will rely more on the upper part of the zone, compliments Caitlin Riley well because she's more down with that drop ball. LSU, first four innings with runners on base, just one for eight, but picking it up this inning. But their speed players, too, making, making moves. Newland pops it up into left. Whitley is there. Sunglasses on with his son trying to burst through the haze, and it's out number two. Looking a little more promising than it did this morning, and a lot more promising than it did about 13 hours ago. On our way back through the great flood of 2023 from dinner. This field has uh, held up very nicely because there was a huge volume of water dumped on it last night. We had a real monsoon, a deluge, if you will. Kenzie Rudity has knocked in 10 in her last eight games. A lot of RBI opportunities she's delivered in them. Drove in five against Georgia over the weekend. One and two for the sophomore Rudity here. It's that balance of speed and power that always sticks out to me about LSU's offense. And not just this year, but every year they seem to have that sprinkle of speed with that gap to gap power, home run power mix. And this year it just mostly all comes from the left-handed side of the batter's box. Feels like the uh, drinking of the hot sauce has really energized the LSU dugout. Yeah, pre-game, mid-game, just all in. We'll try that in between games. On the ground to second base should be routine and is for Kamoku. Is okay. Okay. Oh. You said it beautifully too, Vidalis. <laughs> I'm both enlightened and horrified at the same time, guys. I really am. I want to know how it tasted. We never got the report from Courtney. We just got a very memeable face. Okay, so it's one of my favorite spices, actually. Really great on the rim of a margarita. Spicy, salty, with a hint of lime. Uh, and I have a. Side note question, actually, about the slappers here for Kayla uh, yes. of LSU and the speed player. What are your, what are your thoughts seeing those uh, slappers generate a run there? I absolutely love it. I love using the ground. You know, we saw earlier in the game, Danica Coffey lined out. And lining out is great. She hit the ball really hard, right on the nose, right at somebody. But what Sierra Briggs was able to do to use the ground, pound it, there's nothing a defense can do when the ball sits in the air like that. I live for that as a slapper. 
best. Thanks, Kayla. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Knew, you want to talk about slobbers with me, Amanda, I am here for it <laughs> anytime. Yeah, no, I knew that that was going to excite you out there in center field for sure. And seeing LSU's speed is just something so so unique. They always have those speed players that just make them go. Yeah, they use the 5-6 hole really efficiently too, which I love. I think pulling the ball as a slapper isn't what you want to do. I think you want to really go opposite field, challenge those shortstops and third basemen. Can I step in for one second? I had a question for Kevin. It, it, tell me, am I the only one that just thought salt was crystallized salt on a rim was good enough? <laughs> do we really need tahin? I don't know. I, <laughs> I thought it was good enough too, but now I feel like my world's been opened up. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, okay. Hey, a little watermelon, splash of tahin on there. Game All right. changer. All right. All right. Uh, Sold. All right, we'll see you guys at about 2 a.m. when you're done your shift. We'll get some tahini, we'll get a little watermelon, <laughs> and we'll just sleep at the field. We'll be back here for 10 a.m. tomorrow. We will see the SEC crew in between games before we get set for Texas A&M South Carolina. 3-3 here. Still anybody's game as Sidney Brazan rolls on with an 0-2 count on Savannah Sykes after striking out Kila Kamoku. Seven strikeouts now for Burzon. And that's a hit by pitch up and into Plunk Sykes, who is hit for the eighth time this season. They get hit by a lot of pitches, Ole Miss. Lead off or the go ahead run is on with one out as a result of that hit by pitch. 46 time this season, Ole Miss has been hit by a pitch. So here's Allie, who doubled into the gap in left center her last time. Takes a slow one for a strike as Newland snaps behind Sykes. Winner of this game gets the three seed Auburn tomorrow. It's an Auburn team that was one of the big surprises in the SEC. Auburn took two or three with Ole Miss earlier in the season. Took two or three from LSU earlier in the season as well. There are the Tigers who are getting their pregame meal in. Got about 22 hours before they play. Quality nutrition before then. Two and one to Alley. Out in front of it. Sykes was on the run on the pitch. She'll return to first. What are you going to throw this if you're Brazon? Change speeds again. Go that drop ball. A combination of both, right? She moved that change up more down. Love the way that just she consistently varies her speeds among her pitches. That Tarina said she's the kind of pitcher that'll tell you I'm going to throw it 65 with tilt, and she'll throw it exactly 65 with tilt. And she's been able to hit her spots all game long. She's had more trouble in the field than she's had in the circle, truly, with a fielding error and with a play that was not ruled an error where she just held the ball for a long time, allowing Tate Whitley to take second after a bunt, which allowed Jayla Lassiter in turn to score. Three unearned runs courtesy of four LSU errors. 
Alley to third. Coffee to second. Copy out there. Eddie shows the ball just in time to nip Snikes at second. I think I was trying to say snip Sykes there, not nip Snikes. I it happens. You just never discombobulated do that. I do myself. Time, so. <laughs> it's only game one. <laughs> There's a strike to Furbush, who's now the pitcher for Ole Miss. Struck out twice on drop balls. LSU trying to avoid being one and done in the 6-11 game for the second straight year. Last season lost 7-4 in nine to Mississippi State. It's fouled off at the plate. Yeah, last year Mississippi State had a couple of extra inning games. I went nine and then 13. <laughs> yeah, the 13 inning ones, the one that definitely sticks out. Ashley Rogers threw all 13 in that game for mm. Tennessee. Wow. She's got a little bit more help with the pitching staff this year. That number one Tennessee team plays tomorrow. She does, and that deep pitching staff is what helped lead them to an SEC regular season championship. New uniforms for AM today, by the way. New unis, new uni alert. First time? First time. It's pretty sleek. They look good. Into right from Furbus on the line, and Rudity is there. Yep. At the SEC tournament here at Bogle Park in Fayetteville. 3-3 three, three game, bottom six. And a strike to Carly Petty, the number seven hitter. Petty, Gutierrez, and Stewart batting against Ainsley Furbush. Caitlin Riley went four and a third, gave up six hits, three earned, walked one, struck one out. And now Petty trying to snap an 0 for 17. And Petty will try to snap it with a bunt, and Furbush will make that an 0 for 18. That made it look easy. Now, coming to the plate for the Tigers. The first base is number 55, Brandon Gutierrez. Raylene Gutierrez 0 for 2. It's only 13 pitches, but how different of a look is Furbus than Riley for LSU? Yeah, it's a good time to bring her in because you could tell that LSU was starting to key in more down on the zone. You bring in Furbush, more of an upspin pitcher, and She looks sharp. Gonna face all these left-handed hitters <laughs> in a row for LSU. In the air from Gutierrez. Allie retires her for out number two. Gutierrez passing off some knowledge gleaned to Savannah Stewart. Ole Miss will have 8 9 1 2 up in the seventh inning, which is actually a formidable trio. Both innings where Ole Miss has scored have begun with the eight hitter Brady. This is Savannah Stewart. That is Jayla Lassiter who will bat third in the seventh for Ole Miss. Batter 
Looks like Savannah Stewart, when she leaves the box, is going to wander into the Ole Miss dugout. She gets so far out there, takes her time. Yeah, it makes me just believe even more that we need a pitch clock and we need a set amount of time in between innings and or have the hitter keep one foot in the box because this is happening way too often in our sport. Stewart flares one out to center field and Lassiter's got it on the run. Jayla Lassiter will bat third for Ole Miss. Final inning of Rick on this Wednesday, May the 10th. May the 10th, a very important day for us every year because it means we get to watch SEC softball. <laughs> yeah. And also, it's Amanda's birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Amanda. <laughs> Thank you. I want to know who made the light bright say Ole Miss like that. That was really good. Very impressive. You know what? I'm told that our corning producer, Mega Ronowitz, made the light bright say Ole Miss. Can wow. you believe that? Meg. Great job, Meg. So many talents. Yeah. Meg has been working on that for three hours. <laughs> been her only job of the day. <laughs> that is off the end of the bat. Lexi Brady, that's a gapper. The eight hitter, Brady, sparking the Rebels to life again. A leadoff double in the seventh inning. Every time that Lexi Brady has led off an inning, Ole Miss has scored. She has been a spark from the eight hole. Getting this drop ball, good posture to get her barrel to that pitch. It was moving low and away. She stays on it for extra bases, thinking two the whole way as soon as she sees a good pass, Sierra Briggs. In scoring position, bringing all of the emotion. Lexi Brady, have yourself a day. You know what? She's in the eighth spot, but she's been Ole Miss's best hitter since the start of conference play. Hit 289 in the league, 413 on base, slugged 553. Nine spot. Yeah, it's going to be tough, though, because you know Kill Ponen's going to try to come with some upspin in a bunt situation like that. Now, you got to be careful here because nobody's covering second on the bunt play, and Grisham can get an enormous leap. Bernard does not have a bunt on the season. Again, she hasn't played much, but when she does, she's effective. Seven for 20 with two walks. The pinch runner Grisham at second. Bernard lays down the bunt, and it's foul. The ultimate goal for LSU in this situation is to try to get her to pop up a bunt, have her put that ball in the air, get the bottom of it, and not let them advance a runner another extra 60 feet. Plus, then you don't have to field the ball and make a throw. LSU just not been playing good catch today on D. Bernard is not going to bunt here, and the pitch is a called strike two. So after seeing the first bunt attempt, Jamie Traxel took it off. And now Bernard finds herself in a bit of a chasm. She'll square, she'll pull, she'll swing, she'll miss. A cave for Kilponen out of the bullpen. That's exactly what Ali Kilponen needed in this situation was to attack the nine hole get ahead and then be able to go to her go to pitch her curveball went right at Barnard there in the nine hole the K. So runner at second one out for Jayla Lassiter. And Lassiter takes a big rip. She's had some big swings in this game. She does not have a hit, and yet it feels like she's impacted the game as much as anyone. She's reached in a fielder's choice twice. She's had two mad dashes home. Again, Grisham is getting about halfway down the line to third. Yeah, because in a bunt situation with Braylon Gutierrez, the first baseman crashing in, then it pulls Carly Petty to cover first base. Taylor Pleasance, a shortstop, moving to third base, and it leaves second base open. Looks like Katie Reykjavich is going to call timeout. Really varies. you got to stay on your toes with Ole Miss. Would that be tough for you as a pitcher in that bat? 
Yeah, kind of frees her a little bit. And she's ready to throw that curveball. Likely go to that same pitch again. Why not? One and two for Lassiter. Got a piece of it this time. Jayla Lassiter has knocked in three runs in the four games against LSU this season. Part of this excellent freshman class for Ole Miss. And she takes a tight one. How about that? Away, 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 and then inside with the screwball to move her off the plate. Kelponen wanted that pitch. It was a pitcher's pitch, a little bit off the plate inside. I don't know if it was a great take or if she was just frozen shut. In the air to right field. Rudity going to run out of room. You grow up real fast in this league. With every pitch. Ole Miss is getting older. Lassiter lashes it to left and right at Stewart. That was a tornado off the barrel. Wow. Kilponen kind of gave that away in her motion, too, that that was going to be an off-speed pitch. You could kind of tell halfway through her arm circle that that was going to be an off-speed pitch. And I think Lassiter recognized it, too, and sat back, just hit it right at Stewart. So two down in the inning for Tate Whitley. The corner's pinched in. Whitley slaps one out of play. Danica Coffey has to pinch in here, and she'll be leading off for LSU in the bottom of the seventh. There's the tight infield for the Tigers. Whitley already with a bunt single in the game. And a ground ball to short. Taylor Pleasants to first, and that's the inning. Runner at second, nobody out. Ole Miss gets nothing. Blend if LSU scores, and if not, LSU will be in a familiar place in this tournament extras. Top of the card, Coffee, Briggs, and Pleasance against Furbush. Coffee with a very late swing for strike one. Yeah, it's, it's I think Furbush in relief, man, looking very good. She is, and I think that if you're LSU, now is the time to do it to get to Furbush. She's been pretty much in control. You have one, two, and three coming up, and you could tell that that rise ball, slight up spin, giving Coffee some issues. Two swings and misses by Danica Coffey. Doesn't have a lot of those. Slapped to short. Got to be quick. And it is from Allen. Coffey 0 for 3 with a walk. She's been largely neutralized in the leadoff spot. And here comes another Ole Miss timeout. They truly do come at unusual times. I know. It's very unpredictable. Um, sometimes they'll make defensive changes that are unpredictable, too. They like to control the pace of the game. Is this a rule you'd like to see changed along with the pitch time, or you think we should limit the amount of timeouts in the sport? Yes. Yeah, they did it a couple years ago, but I still feel like there might be a few too many. So if you limit it to, you know, maybe three or four defensive timeouts a game, then a coach really has to be more, even more strategic to think about when to go out there. Yeah. 
Corners are going to stay in for Briggs. Does have a couple of homers this year. Oh. Outside to Briggs. The big RBI producers looming for LSU. Tigers who have struggled in game ones this season. This is game one of their tournament run. And they're hoping they will not be one and done for the second straight year. Number six seed for the second year in a row. Lost to Mississippi State in nine last year. With Pleasance waiting on deck, Briggs will take ball three. Be big just to get her speed on. Most decorated team in SEC tournament history, only five and five in the last five. All time 45 and 25, five SEC titles in the tournament, the last in 2007. Briggs fouls it away, three and two. You get Briggs on base anywhere with Taylor Pleasance coming, even first base, that feels like scoring position. The 3 2. We'll do it again. Yeah, that's going to be the goal. Or try to put the ball on the ground, find a way to get on, or take a pitch and a full count. Make Furbush work finding a way to get on base. In the 191st start of her career, Briggs is robbed. Alley. Electric. You didn't even have time to think there at shortstop, Michaela. Nope, this is all reaction. Came off the bat so hard. Sierra Briggs, such a good at bat to foul off some pitches, such a line drive, trying to sneak it through the 5-6 hole, and Michaela Alley says, no, not on my watch. Big out for Ainsley Furbush, who has been so good in her relief batting. And Beth Tarina just can't even believe it. It's a gold glove play to rob a gold glove winner. And now Pleasance with a mighty hack. Furbush going right after Pleasance with two out, nobody on. Oh, that's a good pitch right there. That's that might be a missed call, an off-speed pitch by Furbush. Should be an 0-2 count. I mean, the bottom of the zone in this game is been consistent. You got to give him that, but that just looks like a, a strike call to me. Oh. Now all of a sudden it's a 2-1 count. You still attacking here with Clark on deck? It's a pick your poison, but just be careful. Keep making good pitches on the corners. Oh. Or out of the zone like that. See if you can get her to chase. And Georgia Clark, I feel like her entire career has seen this happen to her, maybe somebody pitch around, be, get pitched around in front of her to get to her. So he kind of takes it a little bit personally with her attitude. 3-1 to Pleasance, that's a walk. So it looked like it should have been 0-2. Instead, come. In the here and now, it's going to be Vestal against Clark, who's singled in a run, flight out, and walked.
Georgia Clark, ninth all-time in LSU in RBIs. And Clark is going to face an unusual-looking defense here. That's the second baseman, Komoku, who's going to shift back between third and second, so it is an ultra-pull defense on the infield. And then the center fielder, Lasseter, is way in the left center. Yeah, that's that pitch that I'm talking about that makes Brooke Vestal so unique and why she's so tough against right-handed hitters because she will spin an off-speed curveball, drop it down to 54 miles an hour, and as a right-handed hitter, it's a pitch that is slow and moves away from them, deceptive spin to get them out. Oh, that's in the dirt. That squirts away. And the winning run, Pleasance, will go to second. Wild pitch thrown by Brooke Vestal. And now just a simple base hit likely wins the game. Crochet and James Colsey having a quick discussion. An obstruction was called on Komoku at second. It's not going to matter because Pleasant's got there. So she's at second. Ball. And Clark takes ball three inside. That is a good take right there. Brooke Vestal again coming in, likely to face this right handed hitter trying to get Georgia Clark out. And by the way, they don't have a left-handed pitcher in case she doesn't get her out. Three and one. A little out in front. And you saw Brooke Vestal call her own pitch there. Big situation, 3-1 count. Best throw a strike, relying on her to call her own pitch. Goes to that off-speed curveball. And a wild stat here, right-handed hitters with two strikes against Brooke Vestal hitting just .056. Can Clark defy the odds? Foul. That ball's foul. We'll, we'll call. Call. So weird spin come off of her bat too with that ground ball because there's so much spin on Brooke Vestal's pitches. The way that it comes off the bat can have a lot of spin too. That last hop ended up coming back up and hitting her. Beth Tarina actually just asked if she was okay. Hey, deep breath and hit the ball, Georgia. I the transfer from Oklahoma, Brooke Vestal, against the fifth-year Tiger, Georgia Clark. Winning run at second, two down. Clark pops it up. This should do it. Whitley and Lassiter. Lassiter's there. And the first game of our quadruple header. Needs a little longer to finish. To the days, these teams have to go four for four. Brooke Vestal got a big out against Georgia Clark to end the seventh. Jamie Traxel has used her bullpen well. And Ole Miss and LSU, a little bonus softball on a Wednesday morning. Now turned Wednesday afternoon. Part of the order for the Rebs, Smith, Kamoku, and Sykes against Ali Kilponen, who picked up all three outs in the seventh. Ole Miss went down in order in the first inning. They've had a base runner in every inning since. They've only stranded five. In the air from Smith. In the glove of Briggs. I'm sure LSU is just kicking themselves at this point. When they look at the scoreboard and see those four errors next to their name. A couple of innings where you said it, and I, I thought that it was just a good comparison, just sleepwalking defensively through that, through a couple of innings. Hey, 
And I don't want to make the 10 a.m. excuse because both teams had to play at 10 a.m. But I don't know. It's it's the human body's not used to this kind of thing. They don't play a lot of games at 10 a.m. <laughs> whether it's that, whether it's the pressure, whatever it was, it's just weird for this LSU team and how buttoned up defensively they've been all year. Lindsey Leftwich has taken control of their defense in a more active way. And two error, uh, two innings where they made four errors, but there were a couple other miscues in there. Now there is a significant improvement with their defense. Big strikeout there looking for Kilconan. Second strikeout with her curveball, this time looking. She can put this pitch over and over and over again at that same location, that same spot, low and away, right at the knees to a right-handed hitter. Kilponen has retired all five in relief. And here's Savannah Sykes. This is a player who's brought a serious winner's mentality to Ole Miss. Won a lot in her career in Georgia. Not a big home run hitter. Oh. But she does so many things well. And Jamie Traxel said, I, I could go on and on and on. To me, she's warrior one on this team. The more hostile the environment, the bigger the game, the better she often plays. Been on base twice today. And looking at Allie Kilponen splits to lefties versus righties, much better against right-handed hitters by about 60 points difference in the average against her 188 righties hitting off a of Kilponen. And you'll see that too. These curveball type pitchers seem to have a lot of success against right handed hitters with that pitch that moves away. That's why Brooke Vestal of Ole Miss came in against Georgia Clark with her curveball and her off, her off speed curveball. And Phil Ponin, same thing, throws it more firm than Brooke Vestal. Sykes to second and Petty. Before we go to the bottom of the eighth, Dari, how you guys have some Tajine out there? What's happening on the F? These really don't hit Furbish well. Just 167. She is back in there. Yeah, you were starting to see so many more pitching decisions, just matchup based in our sport, going to the bullpen, making multiple pitching changes within a game. And it is a prime example of bringing Brooke Bestel in to face Georgia Clark. So Furbush will face Newland, Rudity, and Petty. Five, six, seven hitters for LSU. None of whom, for what it's worth, have a walk off this year. And that's in the left from Newland. Foul territory. Tate Whitley chasing it and makes the catch. Tate Whitley came a long way to track down this fly ball. The whole time she's running, I was just imagining her running into the fence at some point, but actually did a good job of, kind of avoiding it, not running into it too hard, and most importantly, coming away with a leadoff foul. Whitley, a veteran player for Ole Miss. Mackenzie Rudity. First pitch swing from her. Through the 0 for 3 today. It's driven in a run in four of her last five games. Does lead LSU an extra base hit. She's swinging more this year. On base is down. Her power numbers have gone well up. On base percentage down 38 points. Slugging is up 45. Been able to utilize that really strong gap power and be a little more aggressive. Forty wins for LSU, only one walk-off. That was way back in 
February. February 17th, Taylor Pleasance got a walk-off home run against Utah. Back when LSU Utah didn't necessarily seem like an important game, Utah ended up having one of the great years in the Pac-12. LSU a potential super regional host. Remember, LSU six in the RPI, so though they are the sixth seed, you mentioned it earlier, the selection committee doesn't care where you finished in conference. But if you drop a game to a 29 and 25 team, it's not going to help your RPI. That's very true. Good strength of schedule, good RPI. So interested to see how this entire conference tournament week plays out. I mean, we're in our little SEC Fayetteville bubble, but there's going to be a lot of tournaments going on across the country. There's a resume for Beth Tarina's group. They always, always schedule well. But elsewhere in College softball, if LSU drops this game, they're going to have to be looking at teams like Texas in the Big 12, at Louisiana in the Sun Belt. It was a very good RPI. Tennessee is a team that probably be a top eight seed, though their RPI is worse than LSU's. Just so interesting this year. I mean, I think that everybody really is at the edge of their seat waiting to see what happens on Sunday. That's why. Tune into the selection show and see where your team is going to go. Are they going to grab a top eight seed, top 16 seed? Oh. A heck of a battle by Rudy, by the way. Well, and I think the question is, too, will all 13 SEC teams make the tournament? What do you think right now? Mississippi State is the team that's right on the cut line. I think you need to see how the rest of the week plays out to know for sure about Mississippi State. Rudity, left center field. That's hit the other way with power, and Whitley tracks it down right in front of the fence. Tay Whitley is covering so much ground out in left field in front of her, to her left, to her right. That ball just continued to tail a little bit toward the end, toward the left field line, and that's why she had overplayed it more toward left center. It gets pulled more back toward her, toward the left field line, but she's still able to stick with it. That ball was hit well by Rudity. Had extra bases written all over it. I think the, uh, the fielding card flew out of the wristband as well. Strike one to Petty. So two good plays in the inning by Whitley, and now one out will send this game into the ninth. Hey, think about all the experience on the left side of the field defensively for Ole Miss with Tate Whitley and left field, Michaela Alley at short, and Savannah Sykes at third base. Experienced players that have played hundreds of innings in the SEC. Sykes, your 247th start. Alley, your 251st. And then Whitley in left field is a 50-year senior, one of the great players in Ole Miss history. See Ole Miss make some really good defensive plays. It's something that Jamie Traxel, their head coach, takes a lot of pride in. She's a great defensive coach. Really passionate about teaching that. Harley Penny trying to snap an 0 for 18. And I thought this was cool, Kevin. Jeannie Traxel told us a couple weeks ago that when she was young, she start, she watched things in slow motion. She would tape things, you know, back in an old VCR and tape recorder, and she would watch how they would move, different sports, how the body would move, angles, timing. And that's how she learned defense, and she loves to teach it by breaking it down for her players and for her own mind. Two 
teaches it in some unusual methods too. Sometimes there is a tennis racket involved. For Jamie Traxel, who by the way is a uh, nine-time national racquetball champion. Who will hit balls and test infielders with all kinds of spin. Three and two for Petty. In the air center field. Seven not enough. Eight was not enough. And Tate Whitley helped me. Shook out. Florida's got the nightcap today against Kentucky. Sell me on Florida if they make a run and live up to that preseason ranking. What, what is the potential of that Gators team after an inconsistent regular season? It's been inconsistent mainly pitching and defense for them, but they have such an explosive offense. One of the best offenses in the SEC with the amount of runs that they score. And of course, it's likely that Skylar Wallace will get SEC player of the year and she steps up big for them. So seems like late in the game too. She's just always up. Florida will play Kentucky tonight at some time. We can give you time, but we're a little behind right now, so maybe at seven central. Well, and you think about where is Florida going to go when the bracket comes out? Do they have potential if they make a run here to still grab a top 16 seed? Or are they going to be on the road for the first time in what feels like forever? Pretty amazing. They're 21 in the RPI right now. Every year you could pencil Florida in as a top 16 seed. But Tim Walton told us earlier this year, we're sort of a good defensive team. He didn't think they necessarily would be. He thought they'd have to win games with their bats, which is the last thing you expect to hear from Tim Walt. And they can, too, honestly. So long as it's close toward the end of the game in the seventh inning, you just feel like Florida has a chance because of their offense. Michaela Alley against Alley Kilponen. And Alley beats Alley for out number one. Opponent in relief, dominant. Seven batters faced, and all seven retired. Is that a chess piece right there? Is that a rally chess piece? I think we got. <laughs> it's moving the chess pieces. People ask me sometimes about softball. And you know, what do you love about the sport? I mean, the game is great. The drama is great. But dugout props are definitely like in the top three or four. Rubik's Cube, Light Bright. I'm not sure what piece that is. Is it the queen? That makes sense. It's got to be the queen. And that's why they brought props back. We're going to be able to have them in the postseason. Took them out for a couple years. I was like eliminating the dunk in college basketball. You can't take the props out of the game. Yeah. Furbush flies out. She's 0 for 4. Longest game of the season, by the way, for these teams. LSU lost to Auburn in 9. Ole Miss beat Missouri in 9. So this ties the longest game by innings for the Rebels and Tigers. Winner will get the Auburn Tigers tomorrow at 10 a.m. local. Down and into Lexi Brady. Who again has been Ole Miss's best hitter since the start of SEC play. Reached on an error, scored a run, flight out, and then hit a sharp double to the left center field gap. And a 2 0 count for Brady. In the bottom of the ninth, LSU will have Gutierrez, Stewart, and Coffey. 8 9 1 do up. This feels like this is the type of game that Lexi Brady has just been so locked in. To the left side, and Brady's got another hit. She stays locked in, and she's two for four. A spark. I mean, you could just tell. Some players show up first pitch of the game, and you can just tell that they are focused and locked into this game, and that's how it's been for Lexi Brady. Out around this curveball that it's actually a really good location low and away, but it was right into her swing and just past Taylor Pleasant seen her in this game. 
Now she struggled in SEC play, but she hit cleanup in the last game of the season, had the winning hit, and we were not informed of any injury or unavailability concerns. The all-time, or not the all-time, but the active leader in home runs in Division One is not batting. Hey. Maya has been charting pitches for a while. If she's going to get a shot, it will have to wait. Orman, center field. That's a base hit. And a pretty good button push by Jamie Traxel as the go ahead run Brady scoots over to second. That is Annie Orman's first hit since March 26th against LSU. Had been 0 for 7 since. Well, now it's not going to be Bernard. Almost going to bring a real pinch runner in. Naomi Jones will be running it first. So Bernard pinch hit four by Orman. Bernard looked like she was going to re-enter. Instead, it is Jones, the pinch runner. Now Brian Crochet, the plate umpire, is making his remarks. And sometimes with Ole Miss, you feel like you need a captain's log to capture everything that happens. <laughs> You're so right. Yeah. The new Dostoevsky and Epic. Lassiter ball. takes ball one. Ali Kelponen has to be really careful right now against Jayla Lassiter. Here's what LSU pitchers have done today. They have been careful in these spots. Two for 15 runners on for Ole Miss. It's a pitch that she's gotten her to swing and miss at a few times. She takes some big hacks. Jamie Traxel says that Jayla Lassiter just has the it mentality. Right on that one. Jamie Traxel, we told you she said Savannah Sykes to her is really warrior one on this team. And then Jayla Lassiter will be warrior two. She says they give us a little dog in our fight. Can she come through in the ninth? Nope. It's Kilponen. Cool as a cucumber. Lead us off for Gutierrez against Furbush. Remember, we mentioned earlier, Furbush is even better against the lefties. So LSU is going to bring in a right-handed hitter, Michaela Walker, the rare mid-year enrollee, a very young freshman. I just feel like in this game that the coaches have made all the right pitching moves. They pulled all the right pitching strings in this game with how they've worked their bullpens. You're seeing coaches get better and better at that. No when to bring pitchers in. Oh. Okay. Let's see as many complete games anymore. And Warren Kings th Krings threw the complete game last night against Mississippi State, threw a good game to bring Missouri to today. Off the glove of the pitcher, kicks to Alley. It's short, and she throws out Walker. A bit of pinball wizardry off of Furbush's mitt. The fact that it hit off of her mitt is the reason why they were able to get an out. If Furbush wasn't going to be able to field that herself, that was going to head up the middle of the field. Alley moving towards the ball off the bat. She's in the right place at the right time to get an important leadoff out. And how about the updated line for Furbush, who has walked one batter and allowed no hits out of the pen. Yeah. 
Savannah Stewart searching for her first three hit game. Just a 291 on base, but she's been on with a couple of hits in the nine spot. So you'll notice, Kevin, when Ainsley Furbush is pitching, she has a really unique delivery in the sense that after she gets the signal, she comes to her glove, she gets her grip, but then she actually separates the ball from her glove and shows it to the hitter as she's going forward in her circle right here. You just don't see that very often. Usually pitchers are trying to hide their grip, but it's almost like Ainsley Furbish says, yep, this is how I'm holding it. Very likely throws multiple pitches off of the same grip, but in a world where for so long pitchers have tried to hide their grip, she's the complete opposite. Would you try to pick up on that as a hitter? Yeah. Yes, and I'm sure LSU is so good at picking pitches. Beth Torina is good at it, and she's right there in the third base coach's box. So, guarantee she's throwing using the same grip for every pitch. Only way you can get away with that. Ole Miss has to be careful. They didn't like that last call. Riker Chasen already was warned early in the game. James Colsey's coming down from third to converse with Brian Crochet. Yeah. Looks like there's a reflection from a fan behind home plate that is currently an issue. Anyway, still two and two. Hey, you wait around long enough, you're going to get a foul ball. Game Cox Aggies, who were supposed to start in one minute, will not be doing that. It's down and out, ball three to Stewart with the top of the order coming up. Three two to Stewart. This was just crushed at her. What helped is that it was hit toward her glove side. So her glove, as she finished her pitch, didn't have a long way to move. She just had to pick it up, and it was right there versus coming across her body. I mean, that's a difference of it being a line drive out versus if it's on the other side of her body. I don't, I don't know if she gets to that. This time it didn't go off the glove. It went right smack into the middle. And LSU has drilled two balls up the middle, one off the glove of Furbush, one into the glove of Furbush, and got nothing out of it. Strike one to Danica Coffey. Well, remember that one to Michaela Alley, too, at shortstop? Yep. I mean, the balls that LSU has hit hard has just been right at them. Whitley made that great play on Rudy in the eighth inning, too. The last three innings have been a defensive showcase for an Ole Miss team that prides itself on strong defensive play. And it could be what helps win them this game. The poor defense of LSU and their defense stepping up to make plays in those critical situations. Jamie Trexel said it to us, first part of our season, a lot of pitching and defense. Last couple of weeks, 
Defense and hits and bumps in the road. They're at Ole Miss where the football team plays what's known as the Land Shark defense. They've embraced that mantra here as well. And they have taken a bite out of some hard hit LSU balls today. Left field for Coffee and Whitley gets her glove on another. How about double figures in the opener? Inning 10 coming up in this 3-3 game between Ole Miss and LSU. Take your time, guys. <laughs> We've got it covered here. So, P-Dub. <laughs> Here's a little flare in the left. Tate Whitley leads off the 10th with an Ole Miss base hit. And Whitley's got a two for five day. Starting a rebel rally against Kilponen. It's the third time today <laughs> Ole Miss puts the leadoff runner on. And it is a very good runner. Only two steals, but great speed for Whitley. Here's the number three hitter, Paige Smith. Ole Miss trying to use the power of what we think is the rally queen in the dugout, the rally chess piece. Courtney, you've done some investigative journalism down there for us. Look, if it's in the dugout, guys, I'm going to figure it out. Tahin, the chess piece. I was told that the chess piece was found on the trip to Missouri. There was a chess tournament in the hotel they were staying at, so they took the queen to be determined if they'll be executing the Queen's Gambit. Smith down the line. That's off the top of the wall and over. And that might be checkmate. Paige Smith makes it 5-3. On a blast just off the wall, just inside the line, and just in time for Ole Miss. Kilponen just can't believe it, but Paige Smith stays inside of this screwball. Ali Kilponen trying to work this pitch in on her hands, and Paige Smith is able to get her barrel there. We have seen so many fly balls hit the top of the wall or just barely go over the fence. Paige Smith giving her team the lead, and I love Riker. Jason's reaction over at third base, who is now in the third base coach's box. Jamie Traxel is over at first base, and Ole Miss gets to celebrate taking the lead. In SEC games this season, Paige Smith has 18 hits, nine home runs. Her 32nd all-time homer at Ole Miss. And it has to be right at the top of the list for the most impactful one. A 5-3 lead in the 10th inning. Smith with her fourth home run in the last eight games. Hey. Now 1-2 for Kayla Komoku. It seems like this Ole Miss team has played inspired softball in this game. It's been a grind, it's been a battle, but this team is battle tested. In the right, that ball is lined at Rudity. And you can tell, it looks to me, I, I've not been in the team meetings with Ole Miss, the pregame meetings, or their meeting, you know, before they even got to Fayetteville, but it looks to me like they came into Fayetteville thinking, this is gonna be a completely new season for us. Let's start fresh. It's a mentality, at least, that they're playing with. Trying to be just the fourth 11 seed to win after their Egg Bowl rivals did last year. Jamie Traxel told us that they just don't know how good they can be. And there it is. There's the Queen's Gambit. I mean, she felt like because they lost so many close games that they were battle tested and said you you cannot understand what it's like unless you go through some real adversity. They train hard. 
they have lofty goals. I thought it was interesting. She said she asked her players, why are your goals so lofty? And they said to her, because we train too hard not to have those kind of goals. I hear that more and more often that these practices and the training just getting more and more aggressive and intense. Top to short, Pleasance plays the hop. And just in time to get Sykes. Well, and Coach Traxel pointed out too that so many games this season for them, just one pitch or one play or one hit that would have flipped. She said five to ten games in their season. So they've been in all these games, just many of them been on the losing side of them, trying to put themselves on the winning side of this one. Six and 17 against ranked teams, Ole Miss. There's a strike to Alley. One run games, five and seven. Two run games, two and five. Michaela oh. Alley with a double. Since the first inning error, she has shined in the field. Off the end of the bat, right center. LSU's got Briggs, Pleasance, and Clark coming up to the season. Giving Ole Miss a 5-3 lead, and now to win the game, Ole Miss has to get through the meat of the order. Briggs, Pleasance, Clark, 2-3-4. They're going to earn it if they get it. But Ainsley Furbush has said no problem with this or any part of the order in a brilliant relief outing. Briggs left field, hit hard, hit right at Tate Whitley. You know, I have a three-person, maybe four MVP for this game, and I go to Tate Whitley, her defense and her ability to get on base in this game be a spark. I go to Jayla Lassiter, who doesn't necessarily have the hits in this game, but has been having so many big swings, setting the tone, the energy, top of the order for Ole Miss, and then Lexi Brady, of course, the three that I've started in the offensive side. First three runs were unearned. The last two on a two-run homer off of Kilponen, who still looks shook. And the other one, Kevin, has to be Ainsley Furbush. With the way that she's entered this game, Caitlin Riley got the start, and she came in relief, and she's just looked motivated. She's looked different, throwing with good velocity, spin. Her pitches are breaking. Those are the four that have stood out to me in this game for Ole Miss. And, of course, Paige Smith with the home run, but I think that she fed off of the energy that the three others I named gave to her. Popped up by Pleasance. And of course, it's Whitley again. She's like Roy Kent. She's here, she's there, she's everywhere. <laughs> Ninth put out of the game and left, and LSU is down to its last chance. Five of the last seven outs have gone to Tate Whitley. <laughs> well, Georgia Clark's going to bat. And Ole Miss is going to call a timeout. Remember, Furbush didn't face Clark last time. They brought in Vestal to face her. The only righty in the starting lineup. And Furbush is going to get a little scouting report beforehand. Nothing like a. Bottom of the 10th inning, two out, up by two run timeout, huh? It's, it's Ole Miss today. <laughs> Nobody on, two outs, just need one more hitter. But that's how they have taken every pitch, every moment, every inning just so seriously, trying to control this game and the strategy behind it and stay ahead of things. And it's helped him out. The post timeout results 
quite successful for Ole Miss. We were in Austin a couple of weeks ago. We had Oklahoma State, Texas, and it felt like Mike White did the same thing, took a timeout every couple of innings, and every time they get a hit or they get an out. Worked out for Ole Miss today. They need one more out. Outs low to Georgia Clark. And the top 10 in the LSU record books for RBIs, but she cannot tie it here. She can only present Newland with an opportunity to do so. Ball. That's ball two. Almost outfield has a big shift towards the pull side. Jayla Lassiter playing in left center field. Big hole up the middle of the field in the outfield. It's completely different when they played Clark last time on the infield when they had the overshift on with three in between third and second. Now this is just a straight up defense. Different pitcher she faced too, right? Brooke Vestal yep. came in just for her. So three and oh. Uh -huh. and Clark takes ball four. Just about the last thing you want your pitcher to do with the tying run of the on deck circle and two outs. They don't even give the defense a chance to make a play and now Allie Newland represents that tying run. Allie's got some pop nine doubles second on the team and five home runs. Five three in the tenth and oh. ball one to Newland. I think in this lineup of everybody who hits in front of her, Allie Newland often gets overlooked. You talk about Coffee, you talk about Briggs and Pleasance and Clark. But here's the reigning player of the week in the SEC. A strike to Newland, one and one. Last home run April the 23rd against Mississippi State. One one from Furbush. Into center field Lassiter makes the play a spectacular finish. Appropriately spectacular for the Ole Miss Rebels who defended their hearts out and win 5-3 as an 11 seed, taking down LSU in the opening game of day two.
peace and love for me You are everything that I have ever wanted I want to spend every second of my life with you I don't know if I'm kind of a magical If agreeing with you So the joy afraid that I have turned on so wide So the day if I can just smile on me in my life Baby you are and will remain mine Forever and ever Whenever I look into your eyes I find less peace and love for me You are everything that I have ever wanted I want to spend every second of my life with you I don't know if I'm kind of a magical If agreeing with you So the joy afraid that I have turned on so wide So the day if I can just smile on me in my life Baby you are and will remain mine Forever and ever I don't know if I'm kind of a magical If I agreeing with you So the joy afraid that I have turned on so wide And the effect on your smile on me in my life Baby, you are and